So first things first, get a folder, call it shaders, create a new shader graph, uh, unlit. Call it, you know, something like tune shader, whatever. All right, then you open up the graph and, you know, we're just gonna add node. We're just gonna get the, you know, the lighting node. We're gonna get the, the lighting, um, we're gonna, we're gonna get the, we're gonna get the get light, the, the main light, uh, the, what, what the, what, uh, I mean, oh God. Oh, God. No! No! Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Probably know there's a lot of other videos out there about this, but they're very slow and long and they don't get to the point. I just want light and shadows. But I will link to Ned Makes Games uh, and some other resources if you want some more further stuff in depth. So, okay, the first thing we gotta do, we're gonna create a text file. Can't make HLSL in Unity, so you go navigate to your Explorer, open a text file, call it get light, get lighting, whatever you want, and then just rename the extension HLSL. So, now that we got our thing, we gotta do our uh, return type, void. Um, then we're gonna name our function, call it get light. Then we give our precision type. Only thing in is world position, and then out we're gonna give direction, color, and attenuation. So now we'll go back into shader graph, create a custom node. We'll drag our new HLS file into the source, then name it get light. So now we need to add in the parameters. So we gotta put in world position and we have to hook up our outs of direction, color, and attenuation. All of which are vector three except for attenuation. So uh, even after that, we will still get an error. That's because nothing is really happening. We, we need to define these things that are outs. First, we wanna protect the code while it's in Shader graph, so we're gonna use this keyword, shader graph preview. We'll give the direction an arbitrary value so that it looks like it's coming from the side, and we'll just set color and attenuation to one. So first we need to add in our input. So grab your world position node and plug it in. If we attach the color from the custom function to the base color of our fragment shader, we're gonna get an error because now we have nothing decided on what happens when it's not in shader preview. So first thing we're gonna use is we're gonna get the light, we're gonna get main light. Uh, there's a built-in function in the shader library, which I'll show you later, uh, called get main light. And that returns a light. Um, inside that light, there is a property called direction, which we'll give to our direction, one called color, which we'll give to our color, and one called shadow attenuation, which we'll give to our attenuation. So back in the scene, we're gonna right click on our shader graph and we're making, making a material out of it. Call it the tune material or something. Uh, drag and drop it onto our objects, and we will notice that whatever color we set the directional light, everything becomes that color. It's not very useful, so... But first, let's 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 get this into a subgraph. We're gonna call the subgraph get main light. We're gonna go into it. We're gonna fix its outputs so that it Outputs the direction, color, and attenuation as it expect and named properly. And now, when we type in as we did before, we get 
we, <laughs> we get our node. We could put this anywhere. We could put this in any kind of code. So uh, to make this a little bit more interesting, let's do very basic diffuse. Do a dot product of the geometry's normal vector and the direction. Uh, that gives us a value between zero and one, and we'll multiply it by the color. And now we have shading. But as you can see on the sphere, this is regular shading. We're going for tune shading. Let's uh, let's let's tackle that one real quick. The simplest way of getting tune shading is to use that dot product. It gives you something between negative one and one, perfect for sampling a gradient. So we'll just sample a gradient, uh, switch the, the mode to fixed, then we'll set up our steps, and that will translate into a, sh a shading. There are many other ways to use this dot product. It's really powerful. You can do just about anything. And there you go. We got our banding just as we expect. Uh, this is basic tune shading, but we have no shadows. So to figure out how to do the shadows, what we want to do is we want to go and see where they're located. How, does, how do you even get a shadow? If we go down through our packages and we go to we go to Universal RP, then we can go to our shader library folder, and this is where a lot of the magic happens, if you would. Uh, you can find all things about shadows, lighting, built-in functions. You can use these in all of your custom nodes. So here's Get Main Light. Um, it's asking for a shadow coordinate, and it says it'll populate our shadow attenuation. So what the hell is a shadow coordinate? So let's go to shadows.hlsl in there, in, in that shader library folder. And here we have sample screen. That might be important later, but it takes in a shadow cord. Um, we want to look for something that returns that float four as a sh because we're looking for a shadow cord. If we take here, transform world to shadow cord, that literally says what we want then we only have to give it a position world space, which we already have. So bring it back into getlighting.hlsl, declare a float four shadow cord equal to this function, pass in the world p position, then pass that in through the get main light function, which can take a shadow cord. But if we go back, we'll see that it doesn't work. When there's parts of a shader that need certain things that kind of rely on your quality settings, you might need to put in some keywords. So we need these three keywords. The way you do it is you go into your get main light sub graph, and we go to add parameters. We're gonna add some uh, keywords to our black. We want to add Boolean keyword called main light shadows. Being sure to put underscores between everything. I think if you just type it out with spaces, it'll auto populate this for you. And we wanna set it to definition multi-compile and scope global, and then default on. And then we're gonna do that for main light shadow cascade and soft shadow. You, what you want to do is take that attenuation value from your get light and multiply your final color with it. That way you can adjust the strength of the shadows from your main light. And there you have it. Oh, hi. Hey, I can see you now. That's weird. You, you got some... It's, it's all right. Uh, anyway, hope you like this. My first try at a tutorial. Let me know if you'd want anything else, or something else you want me to cover, or if it was good, or if it was bad. I don't know. Comment it. It all helps. Alright. Thanks for watching, baby. Bye.